TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right, new music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. Matt, we are back with another episode of Weird Algorithm, and we have a very exciting guest with us. I have been referencing her book for episodes on end now. Her cover artist is a friend of the show, Kelly Phillips, and now we have the author of Weird Al Seriously, Lily Hirsch. Thank you so much for having me, you guys, and that's such a nice intro. And I love Kelly. Gosh, I love her cover so much. Oh, she's great, right? Dude, her yeah. her yeah. little graphic novel Weird Me is so unbelievably heartwarming and sweet. I agree. I found that, and then I thought, oh, I wonder if she would do the cover. <laughs> <laughs> I had posted that I was doing this show, and someone immediately messaged me and was like, you need to read this book then. I think it would be perfect for it. And then I bought it, and then I shared the book cover that I was reading it and then someone else messaged and was like, I'm friends with the person who did the cover if you <laughs> want them on the show because I live in Philly. So it was just, it was such a bunch of random happenstance at that point. And I'm very excited because you jumped jumped immediately on, oh, I want to do Taco Grande when when I told you what <laughs> album we were talking about. And I, and I sat down this morning and I was like, let me reread her chapter on Taco Grande to kind of, get a rough idea of maybe why was this one that was appealing and i and i have a prediction i want to throw this out there and tell me if i'm correct is it because you think that taco grande is one of the few exceptions in al's catalog where you can literally just pretend that the original song didn't exist for all of its faults and just live with the al version forever kind of i i don't think you he can erase that original um <laughs> but he improved it he saved it yes uh, you know it's such a catchy there's so many songs actually where they're so catchy and you want to love them but then you hear some story about the original uh writer singer and it's terrible and then i'm like oh now i have to not listen to this song and then al comes along and he saves it yes so that this is one of those for me. It was like that's a that's a fun beat. It's great, and now it's not disgusting. So yeah. I can like it. I was gonna say because you compare it in the book to similar to Word Crimes, where it's like right. Word Crimes came around and you don't ever have to listen to Blurred Lines again because Al exactly. made a better version of a song that's not as uh, creepishly misogynistic. And <sighs> Ali, exactly. I I do a podcast aside another podcast about one hit wonders, and we've done an episode. Enrico Suave, and let me just tell you that when you translate the Spanish lyrics, boy, is it even more misogynistic than you thought? Because the English, the English was the tame part in that yeah. song. Like in the book, you mentioned that like this guy bragged about how much he cheated on his wife while touring this song, and then kind of said like, "Well, it's just part of the Latin heritage." Right, to do that which is so offensive. It's super yeah. offensive. So then for Al to to almost almost intent I I mean I feel like probably very intentionally being like all right well if you're going to act like not being faithful is part of your heritage then I'm going to take this misogynistic song and just make it about all of the foods that somewhat represent that same heritage and make it so much more delightfully charming like Yes. Yeah, there's so much interesting stuff here, I think, with Al and what he did with the song. So not only does he kind of save this song, um, which is so gross and problematic, and that's very much, I think he does that quite a bit. Yeah. There's quite a few songs. And I tried to ask him about this, like, is this something he specifically targets? Um, and he didn't, like, fully say it, but he did bring up misogyny and how it deserves to be targeted. So I think that is something he goes after. Uh, and you see it with the trash day and 
um, the traps and the drive through yeah. and, you know, a few of these and, and blurred lines, which is a song I really liked until I heard the full story. And I was like, Oh, darn it. And yeah. so it was really wonderful that weird. I'll save that song just for me. I'm sure he was. <laughs> yeah, uh, but the Mexican food too thing is interesting because we do have a lot of songs uh, by Weird Al that deal with food, and I feel like sometimes people in the past have dismissed, "Oh, Weird Al, he just sings about food," but it's never just food. It's always like all of these other things are going on. Uh, it might be about Mexican food, which is delicious, but he's got this taking on this other song, um, and then he also has a fun play, like I, which I didn't talk about in the book. Uh, with kind of the authentic Mexican food and not with with this uh, Cheech Marin's part in the song. Yeah. Which, you know, kind of like making fun of this guy and is like, uh, you know, talking about you can't get Mexican food like this in Ohio. Kind of this kind of very like American. I don't know, like. You know what I'm talking about, right? I, I do, it's so, kind of a fun juxtaposition. Yeah, so so two things. I don't want to I want to stay on this point, but I also want to address one other thing cuz I've never thought about it before. And you just pointed something really interesting out like if Al we know that Al really it's very important to him that he maintains good relationships with the artists he parodies, right? This is well documented. Yeah. He always asks for permission. He it's a collaborative thing. He does not want to do a parody of someone who does not want to be parodied. Mm -hmm. But also he, I think you're right. I think he absolutely must enjoy the idea of parodying something that he doesn't, he wants to improve, but that's a yeah. fine line, right? He can't be too outward about that or he will totally. alienate that artist. So it's a, it, yeah. what a, what a delicate balance he must have. I can understand why if, I love that you asked him that question and it makes sense that he would have been not totally a hundred percent to be like, Oh yeah. Sometimes I parody songs that I think are despicable. <laughs> like he can't do that. Cause if he does that, then yeah. it's, that's a, that implodes some part of his, his, uh, structure. Um, yeah, totally. So that's a really interesting point I've never considered before. That's, that's great. Um, now back to this, the, the re reveal that I had looking at this song for this particular episode that I had never realized before that blew my mind is the Cheech Marin rap in the middle if you yeah. translate it, that like kind of unlocks a element of the narrative of the song that I didn't know before, which is that mm -hmm. you could look at this through the lens of like the character that Al is playing in the song is just some like dorky white guy, as he often plays yeah. that type of a character who loves Mexican food, but is not himself. Like he is he is enamored with the whole thing. And then the Cheech Marin character is feeding him and a little bit making fun of him. <laughs> Yes, but totally. also like inviting him in and be like, oh, yeah, eat all this. And like, but but mocking. I mean, I did the the actual translation of uh, the Cheech Marin. Yeah, you've got stupid gringo idiot. You say kind yes. of making fun of him. Yes. Oh, yeah, for, for sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 the translation of Cheech Marin's middle section, which I did not ever really know, was uh, good evening, sir. And welcome to Enrico's House of Salsa. We have many very delicious dishes. May I recommend the burning chicken from hell? <laughs> Very delicious. Your eyes will burn. Your stomach will be on fire. You'll be in the bathroom for a week. Do you understand what I'm saying, you stupid, silly American fool? Yeah, no, it's perfect. And you don't always pick up on that. No, like, I, you know, I had no just idea. Kind of going through, like, you're right. Like, this is typical kind of American watered down version of, of Mexican food. And mm -hmm. then you've got this other thing. Another layer, which I think is really fun. I love, you know, these little layers yeah. is that Cheech Marin, you know, his parents are Mexican, um, but he didn't, he doesn't speak Spanish. Yeah. So that's fun too. So uh, you've got like all of this. So Al wrote that, yeah. um, as, <laughs> which is great. So he's playing the kind of, Al's playing the kind of dumb American character who just loves Mexican food. And then you've got this waiter who's making fun of him, you know, yeah. with this more authentic approach. And, mm -hmm. and it's just this whole interesting layering. And Al actually took Spanish in high school. So you've got this real fun mix. It, yeah. It's, it's, so it's, it's, oh, sorry, it's go ahead, two Matt. things that are jumping to my mind. First of all, the thing that I did read was that, as you said, Cheech Marin didn't, he only really knew basic Spanish. So a bilingual secretary translated everything Al yes. wanted in English to Spanish and had Cheech read it phonetically yeah someone um, from scotty right. brothers had to do it and uh hilarious yeah. that al invited cheech in and only found out when he was there <laughs> just assumed that cheech spoke spanish and he was like oh no sorry i don't but but <laughs> also I love. it's worth remembering because i yes. think it's easy in 2023 
to just take these lyrics, throw it in a translator and get it. In 1992, we had, if you didn't speak Spanish, you had no clue how to decipher that joke at all. So it was almost yeah. at yeah. a certain point, Al is doing this song and he's making a joke for an audience, for basically an audience of two, for an audience of himself and any person who already respects the Spanish, like Mexico enough to speak Spanish fluently. <laughs> the Spanish. rest of us are in the complete dark of that that segment until computers come around and yeah. we can translate it. Yeah. Totally. And it's cool that he included that joke. So it's like he's not disrespecting the culture. Like he's got that in there. And he included Cheech, who is, you know, Mexican heritage. So like that's really that was very respectful and absolutely of a very important I person in, in Hispanic culture in America, especially back then when it was mm -hmm. and again, side note, like as problematic and as frustrating as this song was, Rico Suave, I'm talking about, the fact that this yes. was a hit in America is incredible. Like it, it yes. really is against all odds that this was a hit where, you know, nowadays it's not unusual in America to see a Spanish language song uh, at the top of an iTunes chart or Spotify or whatever it is. Like it happens somewhat regularly, but at this point in history in the night, like that's quite impressive. Yeah. That was not that's a, thing. a good point. That's a good point. And that's like a, a something to respect about the original. So yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. And Al's kind of honoring that by, you know, nodding to the culture and, and not just, you know, being that dumb American who's like, this is better than the food in Ohio. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> we had, you know, the, I think the most obvious, uh, comparison for a previous Al song that you're going to think of when you hear this one, at least for me, is Lasagna, which mm -hmm. happens a few years before this and is, of course, La Bamba. We said at that point it was interesting that he Turk took La Bamba, which was a Spanish song, and made it Italian. Um, yeah. When we talked about Lasagna, we had said that there was an initial, an early idea he had to actually do it in Italian, in Italian. like do the whole song in Italian, and decided that that was too deep a joke and that no one yeah. would get like it was going to be too challenging a joke to get <laughs> for his listeners yeah. and he didn't do it yeah. but on this song he does he i mean he's matching the form of the original track which is in both spanish and english and just kind of switches from line to line but the fact that yeah. al actually keeps that i love the fact that he is yeah. he is essentially challenging his listeners again it, it would not have been easy to do <laughs> in this pre-internet age it's not like you could just google right. the lyrics and translate them like this is a real like i'm daring you to f to learn enough spanish to figure out what i'm saying here um if you yeah. want to actually enjoy the comedy of this song you're gonna have to have to do some work and i, I love that yeah. so I, I love it too and it makes sense too like he's growing up in la you know that of course the, yeah that culture yeah it's everywhere it's it's our culture now so yeah yeah no i agree with you it was it was very smart um, and it's also fun to see him playing with other languages. You know, Al's always pulling and playing with language. And then when he pulls in other languages to play with and rhyme with, and it's, uh, I just love that. He's expanding the palette. I, yeah. would, I would love to kind of imagine this narrator, the, the main character that's singing the song, um, especially knowing what the waiter's line is and like a line like you can't get that in Ohio. I feel like, I'm starting to envision the the main character that this song is being written from almost being like someone from Ohio traveling to another, like tra traveling to where there yes. is plenty of Mexican food. And this is just, he is having Mexican food for the first time in his life. And it yes, is blowing his, it. like I'm thinking of like <laughs> the episode of the Simpsons where Homer has Chinese food for the first time. And he's just like, doesn't want to eat the first thing. And then next thing you know, there's like plates and plates of food. Cause he's just like, I want the, yeah, like he's like, I want the chimichangas. I want the, like, he's just like, give me all of it. I have to try everything now. I think that makes perfect sense. I love it too. <laughs> I kind of love that he's got Ohio in there. I, I, my, my son has been telling me there's this down in the Ohio and all the kids are making fun of Ohio. So oh, really? uh, I often have <laughs> noticed that Al is kind of, ahead of the pace or right there with the zeitgeist oh, yeah. and and uh, once again he prefigured this whole like dissing ohio thing that's apparently happening right now <laughs> no it makes a lot of sense that this is i mean even someone from ohio going to los angeles could easily yes. have this exact experience that we're we're seeing totally. in this song just cannot believe it just is so blown away by uh by everything that they're they're eating yeah no it's great i mean it's it's uh 
Did you see, um, this is sort of a, a, a hard segue, but one of the things I noticed in my research, apparently this was one of the big tracks for Lin-Manuel Miranda. No. When he was a kid, he uh, apparently lip-synced Taco Grande in front of his sixth grade school class <laughs> as like a talent show thing. And that makes sense. I was going to say too, another reason I like this song is it's a fun one for kids. Like yes. my kids love this one. Like, you know, they love Mexican food. This one's really fun. They're playing around with language. Like, you know, that's, that's another fun. So that doesn't surprise me. That makes sense. Well, another yeah. thing that I feel like we need to talk about with this song, um, cause it's something that we compare a lot in the songs is the one for ones, um, from the original song to the parody where he's just changing one or two words and it makes the line that much funnier. And yes. one of the ones that jumps out into my mind is Enrico Suave. He says, there's not a lady that can handle a man like me. That's why I have two or three. And changing that to, there's not a taco big enough for a man like we, me. That's why I order two or three is just perfection. It's like, perfect. It, it's, and he saves that line. That, that original line is just like, oh, oh my God, that's disgusting. And like, ah, like, oh, delightful. It's such an improvement. Yeah, uh, I, all the way down to all the counting stuff. Like, it, it really is, this is a very impressive, because he's doing it in the two different languages, and he's matching the structure again of, like, English line, Spanish line, English. Like, he is he is following the form pretty close. I didn't actually check absolutely line for line, but I think it's, I think it's pretty much exactly I, the same. I think it's close to it. If I remember yeah. when we covered it in One Hit Thunder, it would literally be a verse in Spanish, verse in English, verse in Spanish, verse in English. And then like even in those English verses, a couple Spanish phrases kind of peppered it and he he follows it mostly uh throughout. Yeah. I think I think Al might have a little bit more English in his than Rico Suave, but just a little bit. But like, he also and, probably cuz he needs the jokes to hit. Well, that's <laughs> I was going like, to say it's a, it's a it's a balancing act for him. If too many of the jokes are in Spanish, it it will lose a little bit of impact but i also love again as i said i love the fact that he's hiding some jokes in basic spanish this is a great there's a solid little uh spanish lesson in this song if you found yourself in a place where you needed <laughs> to speak spanish and order yourself some food you could use this song and 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 survive totally. you would get what this you need another one of those songs you can bring to the classroom and like get the kids excited about learning spanish or you know kind of get them ready for a trip Absolutely. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I brought uh, word crimes to my kids' classroom. Uh, the teacher let me help them get excited about grammar. And I brought in word crimes and talked about the different lines. I could see this song in a Spanish class. That would be, <laughs> be fun. Yeah. The, the the biggest line I remembered, and this is towards the very end, the uh, like from my Spanish class days when I was in school, was the, uh, the well, it's been a pleasure. I can't eat, eat no more. Senor la cuenta, por favor. Yes. <laughs> Which means, check, yes. check please, sir. <laughs> Which yeah. is great. That's that's like, I remember that, like specifically being taught that in school. I did, I took Spanish when I was in middle school and I was extremely lucky that I actually got picked for a trip to go to Spain. Um, and I got to go to Spain with my dad when I was in eighth grade, I think it was. So I was like oh, 13, wow. 14. And those were all of the lines. They were like, here's the things that you can say. And that was one of them. Like, we're at a restaurant. La cuenta, por favor. <laughs> like, all the, oh all the make God. sure to, to know how to do that sort of stuff. And uh, that just, like, brought me right back there. It was great. That's amazing. And yeah. I bet you'll never forget it. Once you learn a language or learn something like this in a song, that's going to stick with you forever. <laughs> it, there's really no better way to lock something in your brain than to put it in the right? in the grasp of a catchy song. It's so, yeah. to... to uh, to zoom out on this whole album for a moment, it, it remains so interesting. I saw, apparently, for the recording process of this album, this was the only parody that they recorded after, after Smells, Smells Like, like Nirvana. Nirvana. Which is weird, again, because similar to a lot of the other tracks, this is a two-year-old song by the time he's do releasing the album. Yeah, it's a little bit older. Um, but I guess it was enough of a phenomenon that and it was different enough. It, the thing I just keep yeah. thinking on this record with the parodies, if you're just listening to the parodies, is what a weird time in music it was. Yeah. Because you've got obviously Nirvana is just this absolute cultural force that is happening. But then you've got this track, which is, <laughs> as you pointed out, it's a the, musically it's super catchy and really fun. It's a super great catchy. hook. Like, I love the production on this track. I really do. I think it's a great, a great instrumental. In in a weird way, starting off with Smells Like Nirvana almost makes this album like, 
here's the new music, and now here's a tribute to all of the genres Nirvana has just completely wiped off the face has of decimated. the planet. It's true. It's kind of true. Like, it's true. It's like, yeah. He does like the he does the the hair metal ballad. He does like Rico Suave. He does Hammer. Like all of he does Milli Vanilli. Like everything else in there. It's unfortunately just because of the timing of everything is like it's uh, it feels like it could have come out 10 years ago based on how much Nirvana just wiped those genres off of the radio in one swift moment. Yeah. It really is amazing yeah. to see the, uh, yeah, like you said, uh, or the, uh, you know, new kids on the block and the MC hammer track, like yeah. all of that stuff feels so, um, yeah. Like from another universe comparatively. <laughs> but those sort of catchy songs like this Rico Suave business, like I feel like there's always some catchy song going around yeah. that you don't want to have in your head, but it's stuck in your head. I feel like that like defies time. We are Absolutely. always dealing with that. Like I would love a parody of this Rick Astley business. My kids are Rick rolling me <laughs> constantly right now. Like that's so much fun. And then the song is stuck in my head for days. And I'm like, Ugh. you know, there's so many songs like that, that you just can't get rid of. And it would be great if uh, Weird Al would save them all, like improve them all. That it, it's like a a lesson or more fun, or it can get you ready for lunch. Something yeah, so it's it not does just in my brain for no reason. No, no, it, no. It's true. It does feel like every other year, like clockwork, there is some inescapable earworm mm -hmm. that just dominates. Yeah, everything. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. be it like the Spice Girls wanna be, or the Macarena, or like like these songs where it's just like you can't go to a sporting event, you can't go to the movies, you can't go to just a regular concert and not hear the song either played over the speaker system or done yeah. as a done as a joke cover by a bit. Like it's just. It is part of the culture from that point on, and you will never be able to escape it for the rest yes. of your life. <laughs> totally. And it's somehow catchy enough that it will just live forever in your mind. Yes. There's nothing you can do. Nothing you <laughs> Crawl can do. in there. Well, speaking of songs that live forever in our mind, the catalog of Weird Al Yankovic, Matt, you and I, we have to rank this parody. We do. But real quick, before we do, there's one other note I found on this song that kind of blew my mind that I want to make sure we talk about. Did you guys see that this is one of the only Al parodies that has been covered? No. Not only was it covered, it was covered by someone named Fred Molin or Molin, Fred Molin, and was featured on a 2007 CD of all songs inspired by Ratatouille. Oh, I saw this. And didn't they have to, they had to change the reference to margaritas. That's right. They had to get rid of the was, line about yeah. margaritas. And, Which is interesting uh, too that Al included that as a non-drinker. That is that is true. We've, we've noted before on this show the rare references to al alcohol that he includes in his mm -hmm. songs because it happens very rarely. Every once in a while he'll do it, um, but not, not very often. But no, I mean, this was released by Disney. Like this is a Disney album in 2007 that features a cover <laughs> Of Taco Grande. I mean, I was, it, it is on Spotify. You can listen to it. I recommend that you do. Um, the, al the album is called Ratatouille, What's Cooking? Um, and uh, uh, yeah, so he had to change the picture of Margarita's line. Instead of that, it, they say, and I'd love some carnitas. And uh, apparently they also changed the, uh, the rap, the Cheech Marin bit. Because again, I could maybe... They thought that was a little too mean as well. So that is just like restaurant ambient noises in it instead of um, speaking at all. Do you like to laugh, geek out on music, and learn all about that band or artist who had that one song back in the day but then seemed to fall off the face of the earth? If so, you need to subscribe to One Hit Thunder. Together with an array of interesting and hilarious guests, we do a weekly dive into one-hit wonders like Eiffel 65's Blue, Crayshon's Gucci Gucci, EMF's Unbelievable, Delamitri's Roll to Me, Los Del Rio's Macarena, Musical Youth's Pass to Duchy, and even Patrick Swayze's She's Like the Wind. So are you subscribed to One Hit Thunder or what? As Desiree would say, you gotta be. And as K7 would encourage, you gotta come baby come and join in on the fun of the One Hit Thunder podcast. 
this is another one of those songs where you look it up. I, I, if you Google this song, you will find certain forums and certain articles that people have written that have been like, is this an example of an Al song that could be considered culturally insensitive now? Right. Generally speaking, yeah. generally speaking, most people, if, from what I have seen, don't seem to find it that way because Al always manages. Okay, so maybe in the year 2023, it's unusual for someone to do a a white guy to do a song putting on an accent and putting on the voice like right. he does. We said the same thing about lasagna. That's just yeah. the nature of comedy, unfortunately, when you do these sorts of things, th different things age differently. But he yeah. always manages to do it from a place of like such like respect and appreciation for the thing that he's doing. You never feel like he's, yeah. we always say like Al never seems like he's punching down on any no, subject that's ever. True. And um, this is a good point. This is something that I like, I really thought a lot about because there are those songs where the humor plays different now. Yeah. You know, this song is 1992. Um, and it's a funny issue that Al has to deal with because he is so popular. It's so like his fame, you know, he's a legend now. Yeah. Um, most funny music, you know, it, it doesn't last like that. So you don't have to deal with a joke over time. Exactly. And how it ages. So this is an issue for him. And, and that's kind of why I brought up this, the Cheech Marin thing, because that's really interesting that he included him and he had this kind of juxtaposition with the dumb American. So he was, uh, and, and the more authentic. And, and so he, there was a real moment of respect there. I agree. Um, yeah. Which I think s could save this even now. Um, but again, like this is 1992, things change. Things change. Well, again, <laughs> that's a part of why I said I was in, surprised kind of surprised but also very pleased that even in 2007 Disney put this on a record like it, it is still like even now like it still seemed to read the right way in the right context like I I, yes. I, I don't think it you know I, I I often think people like to reach for these sorts of things as well I think it's just like you know yeah. I, we all have see clickbait articles all the time and it was like you can find if you look it's like you know eight examples of times when Al went too far it's like all right well I don't know about it about that right. again there there are cases to be made for like yeah okay maybe some of these jokes yeah it's maybe you wouldn't write the joke exactly like this if you wrote right. this song today right and i would never want to take away like if someone is offended that i mean sure that i respect oh. that that's I, that totally but uh for me personally looking at this i i notice these things he's doing that are very respectful i yeah. recognize the context 1992 and i think for me what really saves all of this is that he is taking on what uh, the original, which was so, so problematic. Exactly. So, taking on the original, gonna... like boosting it in the right way of like, hey, this yeah. is this wildly popular Spanish language hit, go figure. I'm going to recontextualize it to celebrate a different part of Spanish culture, <laughs> hopefully a better part of Spanish culture that we can all get behind and, and make it like just infinitely more enjoyable. This is a great example. Yeah. Now we're up really approaching the ranking stage. I'm sorry yeah. I delayed us there, but because this is- It's all good. Yeah. I, I think this is a perfect, you said it at the beginning of the episode, Matt. I think this is like, I don't know how anyone could say this wasn't better than the original. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like it, he, yeah. like, yeah. Like so in terms of songs where he is like, without a doubt improved on what he started with, uh, this is, this is a, a win across the board. No question. Wow. It feels like you're going to rank this high. Well, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, no, I'm not going to. I, I, I think it's so much better than the original. It's still not like yeah. uh, it's not my favorite Al parody of all time. Yeah. I think it's I think it's fun. And I, I, you know, he he improved on he improved on something where the, the bar was low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the I guess that's what I'm trying low, yeah, to say. The bar was it, low on this it. one, and he did make it a lot better. Yeah. It's still not like a top parody <laughs> yeah. for me, but I do, I do think it's a like a testament to how incredible he is when he works his magic on something because I think it's I think it's better than it had any right to be. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah. It's neat what he did here. It's neat the whole yeah. backstory. That's yes. that's why I like this one. I like Agreed. all of that. All that layering is so interesting. Yes. I, I've already figured out where I'm putting this guy. It's part of the, the giant food cluster in the middle. Uh, I put yeah, it we just all have below. A food cluster. <laughs> I put it just below Addicted to Spuds, right above the theme for Rocky 13, the Rye or the Kaiser, um, which puts it in the higher chunk of my parodies list, but still in, in the overall middle. Um, actually, it might literally be the dead center. This might be the most middle. Uh, of any of my songs right now. <laughs> but how about What's you, What's the Matt? criteria here? You know how, like, I have such a hard time judging, like, what 
should be ranked high. I just know what I think is interesting. So what's your, how, how did it end up there? Uh, so for me, I literally just follow my gut at that moment and look at which one of these. So for me, it's a lot of which of these songs would I most like to listen to immediately a second time compared to the rest where I, I do love lasagna and addicted to spuds and listen to them regularly. Rye or the Kaiser, not so much. I could see myself listening to this a little bit more than Rye or the Kaiser again, but not as much as addicted to spuds is kind of the weird math in my brain. We've never really discussed that, Matt. What's the math that goes into your head while you're getting ready to rank this guy? I mean, it's a lot of it is really just a gut feeling. It's definitely gotten weirder the more, like as we've done more and more songs here, because you you find your, so we've broke them into categories, of course, where we're ranking parodies versus originals versus polkas. Like we're, we're separating those out because I truly don't know how to judge a parody against an original of Al's. That seems impossible. Yeah, it's a combination of like how how clever I think it is. How and also there's we keep saying with the parodies too, there's a there's an element of how much do you love the original? Because the most like Al's best parody is when it's a great original and then Al writes something that somehow elevates the whole thing up. Like the original is still great, but then Al's parody is even better and it's it, it just everything kind of like lifts to the top, I think. For me, yeah. when it's I mean like Right but now on my right now oh, on my list, his best parody is Yoda. Yeah. Which okay. I think is an example of like an absolutely like Lola is just an incredibly well written pop song. I think it's yeah. flawless. Yoda is a great, great subject matter. I love the story. I love his like commentary on Star Wars. We talked in the episode about that, about how incredibly prescient he was about like that franchise never being allowed to die and these people being CGI'd into their own movies decades later. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that that's like a level of brilliance. And as we said, like Al is like an oracle sometimes and can just see yes. things that like it, that to me yeah. is one of the best examples of that I've I've ever seen from him. Actually, so. yeah. there's never been a better person to run this past as you're talking about why Yoda is your number one. My number one is I think I'm a clone now, <laughs> which, <laughs> which, which is a wild, right? A wild call. Yes. Wild choice. But hear me wild. out on this. I have to pull the lyric up real quick. The reason why I did that was that there is a part of me that thinks that I think I'm a clone now. Low key is one of the most autobiographical songs that Al's ever written. Because the second verse, he says... Signing autographs for my fans. Come and meet the carbon copy man living in stereo. It's all right. I can be my own best friend and order myself a pizza, which I think in a really weird way is him addressing how he perceives his career as the carbon copy man. The guy that's just oh doing gosh. these copies of songs and like the loneliness of being in this very niche crowd like thing thing where He's adored by his fans, but is like maybe a little lonely on tour, not having anyone to share. Like, I genuinely think it's the most autobiographical verse he's ever written. That is amazing. I, I do never love that looked reading. at this song yeah. that way. I just, I, I mean, the title of that song is hilarious. It's yes. Just, it's just funny. I, but I never looked at it. This was not one I picked up and really did the deep dive. And yeah, that's, that's fun. I, him playing with what that means to be a parody artist, which is you know, is is a problematic thing for some people, which, mm. uh, you know, not for us. <laughs> you, <laughs> you know that there's such an art and parody, but that idea, like, what am I doing? Who am I? Am I just copying an original or am I making something better and, and kind of maybe picturing him on some lonely night feeling down and thinking, well, I'm just a clone. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> Him trying to reckon, reconcile and reckon with his own legacy. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yes. It's, it's yeah. A, what kind a, of no, that's a, that's an entirely, that's, deep. That, that's a I Matt Kelly it. original right there. That's a, a brilliant read on that song. Well done, Matt. I love it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well done. Thank you. All right. Well, I did, I, I killed some time for you, Matt. Now we that really was need to know where you That a tremendous amount put. of stalling for me to find a place for Taco Grande. <laughs> and I am going to also, so again, we're talking about placements here. It's easy to, also rank something like this against uh, other food songs. <laughs> an, uh, well, another song that I referenced, which is I'm going to put it just above lasagna 
because I do think it's it's better than that. I I enjoy this song makes me. I think it's smarter than lasagna, and I think it's a more just clever take. And also, as I said on the lasagna episode, I just I don't ever need to hear La Bamba again in my life. <laughs> so <laughs> that that takes a toll on that song for me. And this one is is just yeah, it's more interesting for me. So I'm putting it right there, which is kind of like the bottom area of the middle ish for me. Um, but does not impact my top five or bottom five. Well, Lily, we've got a few things real quick. First of all, okay. before we hit record, you told us how stressful the idea of ranking things is for you. And I'm sorry, <laughs> but we're going to make you face your fear. Um, oh you're going God. to have to do a little bit of ranking. So what we do on this show is that anytime that we have a guest, they can place their song against every other song that a guest has ever been on the show. So at some point... We're going to need you to just pick a spot where Taco Grande goes in this giant list. But also, you can move a song as many spaces in one direction as you want. If you think a song is too low, you can bump it up. If a song's too high, you can bump it down. And while you're trying to figure that out, why don't you tell us a little bit about your book <laughs> and why people should go buy it? And and before you, you dive into it too much, I just want to point out the guest rankings are absolute chaos by design. Because yes. as we just said... The next guest we have on this show could take your song and move it anywhere on the board. It's like a like a white elephant version of rankings of songs. So do not <laughs> feel like yeah. you, like the odds that your song will stay where it is longer than a week or two are very small. Is very so slim. It, this it, is a okay. this is a fun goof we do with guests. Don't don't. Uh, <laughs> No one will judge you on this no, decision. No, literally no one will. So we've hard. had guests. We've had guests put their song. I think my favorite move of all time was the person who put their move at the bottom of the list, and then yeah, just then you can't mess with me. And then yeah. just moved like one song below it. Like they're yeah, just like, yeah. <laughs> just like, I like it. Well, gosh, this is okay. Well, this is tough. Um, let me see. I, and I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Nope. They're loving their song. I want to respect no, that. Don't, don't even worry about don't, that. Don't no. even think about that. I'm pretty sure at least one person came on to talk about living with a hernia because they don't like it that much. <laughs> so. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, and Taco Grande is not actually, like if I'm honest, it's not actually something I'm going to be putting on a lot. I just think that's all fair. that's behind it is very interesting. Um, and what he did and kind of totally, that, like, totally. Absolutely. The different layers are so neat. No, I love um, on it. Just I'm not to interrupt you while you're ranking, but I love the fact that you came on to talk about this song because this is one I did not think anybody was going to want to be a guest on because it is just like a <laughs> it, it's a it's a. I mean, it's notable. This is obviously, this was on the food album. We're approaching like compilation yeah. times where like I said many nice. times, that was one of the first things I got from Al was that food at food song compilation. So I knew yeah. this really well from a young age. Um, but other than that, I mean, this is a, like, talk about a song that has been forgotten to time, like Rico Suave. There's no way anyone is listening to Rico Suave, <laughs> Rico Suave in 2023. Absolutely. Mm. And that's probably part of the reason I picked the song too. Um, like I think the whole book, the whole kind of initial idea behind Weird Al seriously was me kind of sick of traditional music studies and classical music, ignoring funny music. And I yeah. wanted to do something with that category because it was dismissed and Weird Al was the first person who came into my mind and I just got lucky in getting uh, to talk to him and then the book you know took off it took off for me or you know I, I was able to write it um but I'm always kind of attracted to things that are dismissed and yeah. Taco Grande and the whole food topic you know even within Weird Al's um, output is kind of, oh, it's just a food song or, you know, just about food. And it's never just about food. So it makes sense that I would go go for Taco Grande yeah. <laughs> in, a, in a lot of ways. And that's also me talking about the book because you said to talk about the book. Yeah, there so, you go. That um, Now we're tying it all together. Yeah, this is great. We tied it all together. It's like a callback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that that was kind of the whole reason behind the book. And then and, and I'm trying to make that case throughout the book, like, look at all that's going into these songs. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not just the songs I'd want to listen to. It's songs that are so interesting and so well thought out. And Absolutely. There's so much musicianship behind them. And and that's what I'm that's what I tried to do and, and kind of highlight throughout that. And and it was, I'll tell you, the most fun book project I've ever done. Oh, and I can I, only like, imagine. <laughs> yeah, and I was really sad when I finished writing it because I was like, I'm not. How am I going to have this much fun? And how am I, am I going to, you know, get to interview someone more fun for a book project? Yeah. Like, he was so so nice. You were talking about his approach to parody and how 
you know, he asked for permission. He's mm-hmm. just such a nice guy. And now because I write that book, I get a Christmas card from <laughs> Al every year. Oh. It's just, there's just nowhere to go. Go. I can't go higher than, than that book. It was just. It's so, so wonderful, wonderful to hear. Yeah. We've had a, a good few guests now who have known Al personally in various forms and you know, worked with him or just know him as a friend. And th- no one will ever say anything different. It's like when you meet Al and you get to know him a little bit, like you are a friend for life. You get birthday That's messages. Amazing. You get Christmas cards. Yes. Like he is just the most generous person. It reminds uh, yes, me a I lot of no what I idea. heard about Paul Rubens. I've heard that about mm. the late great Paul Rubens as well. That yeah. he was another one of those people that like you met him and he never forgot you and you were getting birthday cards and Christmas cards every single year. That, that it's point. amazing. Yeah. I just never thought that that would be a byproduct. And if I had known, like I, you know, I would pick my book projects around that. Like who <laughs> that I write about where I'll get a birthday card. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, mean, I, I probably, I can't imagine. While you're, while you're looking at the list to, to figure out your ranking, I do want to also shower some praise because on this very album, I think we spoke very highly about some of the bravery of you uh, tackling a few hard hitting questions in there specifically in reference to trigger happy. Um, yeah. And really kind That's of right. We talked about that in the trigger happy episode. Thank yeah, you for bringing for, that back, Matt. For really kind of just like, you know, asking the hard question of like, maybe it's time for you to play this song because of what it's about. Yeah. Um, and, and I think his response was beautiful to that question, yeah. but it, you know, I, I think a lot of people would be afraid to ask that, to, like to to basically put that out into the ether. And I mean, huge. I, that was oh. the moment when I was reading the book, and I was like, "This is brilliant. This whole book is phenomenal." And that was like I a big love, reason. For I really it. appreciate that, and and calling me brave because if you had seen me during that interview, you would not have thought I was so brave. <laughs> I, was, I it was. I did not. I had not really gotten nervous like that before interviewing someone. I, I don't know what happened. I was so nervous, but I had a li- all the questions written out ahead of time, so I yeah. stuck to my questions thank goodness and i was unable to think of anything off the top of my head it was like i was a frozen person so mm. i stuck to my list i was such i've told it uh, before too like when i came there and saw him in person at his house that was the first time i'd ever met him i told myself do not say i i had a, brought one of my books to give him just so he knew i was not some you know i I had spoken before uh so they knew i was a real author but i still wanted to somehow prove it that he had (laughs) not made a bad choice in speaking with me so i brought him a book and i and i handed it to him and i in my head driving down to la i said do not say i hope you don't find any word crimes and then hand him this book (laughs) but but i froze you know he's so tall he looks just like you you imagined and i just like froze up and that was the first thing i said it was the only thing i could think of to say and it was so awful oh that's great oh no i'm sure he i'm sure he laughed and was a good sport about that we it was very very nice to me i mean considering what how uncool we keep putting it into the ether of like when he comes on our show like like yeah well maybe he'll be on the show and maybe he'll be great we'll see and we're putting I it in the ether are, he will he will yes and you are much cooler than i was yeah oh that's well that, right now we are true. right now we are we'll see <laughs> yeah you guys are nailing it you know i think because i'm not sure about how to rank and i've never been good like even when i was you know in graduate school in musicology and people would like want to rank symphonies or I've always been terrible at that because it's like it's so subjective and Mm -hmm. so I think I'm just gonna put Taco Grande at the very top right all right yeah Yeah. let's do it and it'll create some great (laughs) arguments like I'm sure other guests are gonna be horrified by that that's great see that now you're doing it right that's the way we do it all right you also have to move one do you want to really get crazy and throw eat it at the bottom like (laughs) Oh my God. Yeah. Yes. Let's do it. Let's put Eat It at the Bottom. Boom. That's oh great. man. That's great. I cannot wait great. until our next guest comes on. This is going to yeah. be phenomenal. Oh gosh. You know, once you start doing that, I want to like keep going. Like we need to put Living with a Hernia higher. Oh my God. has got to get rid of me. Just say well, goodbye uh, to me. I'm going to mess the no, whole thing up. That's the thing. No, we'll bring great. you back. You get to do this yeah. every time you're a guest on the show. So. 
we will certainly have you back in the future to yeah. mess up our guest ranking even more. <laughs> like, oh my god, that's what I'm here that's, for. You'll there be the you wild go. card of the podcast. I every every other guest will be like, oh no, Lily's coming on. Our our rankings are going to be ruined. destroyed. <laughs> that's the reputation. That's the reputation I want. Finally, there, yeah, we, go. there we go. Well, Lily, thank you. You were an absolute delight to have on. Everyone needs to pick up the book Weird Al. Seriously, it's essential, essential reading, guys. Must, At this must, point, must. literally both of the people who made that book happen have been on this show. It could not be a more yes. weird algorithm. We love it. We love piece it. of literature. So that's so nice. It was so nice talking with you both and thinking through these songs like that. It was so fun. So fun. <laughs> You're listening to the Geekscape Network. 